Hughes. Hughes coming up, showing a tire to Carmichael. Hughes makes the cut. Carnage. Ricky Carmichael hits the hay bale. Carmichael goes off the track. And Hughes is right there in second place. Ricky having to go through the desert to get back on the track. Be surprised if he didn't bend the motorcycle. He just flipped on. That's a cliff there. He went over the flap. He comes up wide, hits it. That's what starts his problems. He's not going to save that. He's headed right for the downhill. Billman coming into this race has all been Carmichael, Tortelli, Hughes on the four stroke. And Billman leads it. He's pulling away, too. Wyndham up in there, too. Wyndham looking really good to this point. Welcome back to Glen Helen Raceway. Our leader, David Villeman, is back in the mechanics area. 120, Ryan Hughes. And here comes Tortelli. Word of bar, the two Hondas going at it. The two-stroke, number 13, versus the four-stroke. Tortelli to the outside. And Sebastian Tortelli. We got Hughes back there in the new 450. Barry, who's been hot lately on the proven 426. He can't even hear himself think. There's so much noise going on back there. David Billman had to pull in as your early leader for Team Yamaha. Billman had a terrible Supercross series. His luck has followed him outdoors. Nothing behind the leaders when they came by. Get used to that pace. Ricky Carmichael is flying. He passed 13 riders in the last lap alone. He's catching these guys, but he's catching everybody in between. He still has a chance at the top. Whoa. Tim Ferry darn near went for a ride there. What a tight race it is right now for second place. Ferry right on the back rubber of number 120, Ryan Hughes, as they come down that very, very steep hill. It looks like a wall going up that hill. Here's Ferry taking over now. 80-foot jump. To the inside, Wyndham. Can he make the move? He's 30 years old. Placed third in the Supercross Wars for the third consecutive year this last season. Ferry has picked up on our leader, Sebastian Tortelli. Look at that. He's almost to the point of intimidating Sebastian. Ferry to the inside. Ferry takes the lead away from Tortelli. Oh, this is an amazing development. Like Link, he's able to put between himself and Tortelli. Ferry now. Tortelli, he's close enough. By the way, Ferry rode at Salt Lake. It was a great battle. He almost stole the win and stopped the streak of Carmichael. Then I've always liked the way he rides. It just took him so long to, to ride like this that I started to lose my faith in him a little bit. Factory rider, privateer, factory rider. Oh, he stalls it. A bad break stops right behind him, almost to protect him. Well, he's in that deep rut. He couldn't go anywhere. But, uh, yeah, he might have. Welcome back to Glen Helen raceway as Ricky Carmichael went down again. Believe it or not, he's come back from last to eighth place. But that's the second time he's been down here in the opening moto. That could have some effect on the confidence level as we enter the final lap of Sebastian Tortelli. He does so well in those deep ruts. All down the lower portion of this track, the ruts are just up to the foot pegs. You can see he really needed to get through the... The checkers are out. The checkers are waving for Sebastian Tortelli. Battle with Tortelli takes second place. Kevin Windham rounding out the top three. Okay, we're set to go. Let's see how Carmichael gets out of the gate. Good start for Ricky. Carmichael and Hughes. Hughes the whole shot. Guys. Lusk, Ferry, Tortelli, Wyndham, they're all there. Good starts. John. Already starting to apply pressure. There's Lusk, 11. 15 is Ferry. Oh! Amazing that Carmichael was able to hold on to that baby. Look at Carmichael. This dives into that berm on the inside. Great acceleration. Whatever Chad Watts did to that machine, he did the right thing, that's for sure. Into the shadows. Here comes Hughes. Oh, this is an incredible battle for first place. Whoa. And once again, somehow Ricky holds on. RC trying to make up for going down twice in the first moto. Back in, hits the edge of that berm, kicks sideways. Now watch how good he is at saving this. Look how strong he is. Keeps his body right. right. Not Ricky. Now watch this again. The next time they go down a hill, swapping back and forth. 
He had a lot of practice with fish tailing in Supercross this year. Yeah, this is nothing new. Here we go. Hughes, number 120 on the Honda four-stroke. The Yamaha four-stroke of Tim Ferry, number 15. Ferry makes the pass going up the hill. He's got no goggles right now. He's just a sitting duck. So Hughes having to turn his head using his visor the overall at this point in the race. Second and third place. That's where they're currently battling. And Tortelli. Of the racetrack where Ferry had that problem the first motor run. Oh. Tortelli ran into the back tire of Ferry and he went down. In a career and a championship, one of those came on this track. Ricky Carmichael, he has never lost except for the first moto today. He's shaking his head right there going, yeah, I won this one, but man, I wanted to win it. Again, keep the streak alive. So the checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael will get the overall championship. Number 15 with two second places in today's moto action. Carmichael won the battle, but Tim Ferry, as you see here with a 2-2, wins the war. He gets the overall trophy. Carmichael now has moved all the way up to fifth. That's an impressive ride. And that lead group, I thought that lead group was pushing pretty hard. Carmichael really pushing the envelope. He had nine victories last year getting the title. Let's go down and hear from his mechanic. Inside, LaRocket poured it on against Wyndham. And Mike LaRocco moves into third. Rocco of old when he really used a lot of body and machine contact. Here comes Carmichael now. He's trying to pass Wyndham. Wyndham's got the target on his back, and look at that leaping move by Wyndham to save the spot. Very much in the championship hunt. And look out for Carmichael. Good, quick, on the brakes, on the power for Carmichael, and Carmichael moves into fourth place across the nation's everything battle for second place is on right now Villeman trying to hold him off and uh oh Carmichael has gone down position for another overall victory the checkers are waving Sebastian Tortelli is looking for the first win of the day off and running Tim Ferry is right there so is Villeman Wyndham Number 14 on the Suzuki. He takes the lead away from Ferry. For grabs with him that far back. Team Kawasaki mates. They're not going to rub fenders. In the pits. The nose. Oh, no. That's twice. Ryan Hughes down again early in the race. This time he didn't have to restart it, though. Oh, a scene is set for a great battle here for the lead. Wyndham and Ferry going at it. And here's Carmichael moving into third on Villeman. It's one of those days for Ricky where you're just absolutely focused. You're forced to focus on the war, not the battle. There's no way he can win the overall unless he just shoots. Here comes Ferry on Wyndham. Ferry passing for the lead. And Morocco takes him pretty easily. Now we shift back in the battle for second place. Here comes Ricky Carmichael against Kevin Wyndham. Just went through that series of corners. And there's Ferry. He was setting the pace out front, so Ricky is the fastest rider on the track. Or, you know, Emig and Dowd. I mean, now a couple of guys can, you know, I, I hate to think about it, but can drop out with an injury or something, and you're still going to have an unbelievable seat. Inside the top ten now is really something. The top six are just unbelievable, and it depends on the start and if you're riding. He couldn't quite hold the barrages off in the... Uh... Opening round at Glen Helen, taking two second places, good enough for the overall. California, then it was El Cajon. Well, look at this. Florida again. Something about Florida. Now Tortelli lives there. Father him. Of course, they're used to more humidity than this, but I think that's worse. Now, this heat doesn't bother these guys at all. Look at Carmichael. Carmichael to the inside, showing the wheel. He's trying all kinds of different lines now to the outside and has the edge on the corner and ferry come back carmichael peers over at him i'd love to know what was in the head of ricky when he looked over at him that's a long glance it was more more of a stare than a glance i don't know if that was a hey take that or hey bud here we are again one and two just not quite squared away he's on the final lap not only is there a rivalry for points between Tortelli and Carmichael in the outdoors, it's a close battle between the two in laps led. Sebastian Tortelli, if he holds this position, 
will take the overall victory. Let's take over the points lead. Looks like Tortelli's going to have it and the overall. The checkers for Ricky Carmichael. His second moto win out of four on the season. John Dowd, number 16. Ricky Carmichael, a good start in four. Oh, hold on, Ricky. The racetrack and skiing on his foot around there for balance. It just about threw him off the high side. Green flag is out. Billiman and Wyndham, one and two. Billiman was praying for rain. Oh, no. Carmichael goes down. Another bad break in the opening moto for Ricky Carmichael. Every He's still our leader here in the first 250 moto in number four. He's choosing to ride with the number four plate. Instead of the number one plate as the defending champion, Ricky Carmichael is now in 13th. He lapped. It wouldn't hurt him in the points. But by God, he does not want to be lapped in this moto. It's been bad enough already. Well, Ricky, after such a dominating championship year last year, but he's had different winners winning the overall. You have the talent to win. And you're right, Art, that's really helping Ricky while he's struggling with his first moto. Number 934 won his first American uh, motocross 250 moto right here last year. David Villeman takes the checkered flag for his oh, first day. is trying to start his four-stroke. Wyndham gets a great start, but Ferry stalled his bike at the gate. On the inside, Wyndham with a nice move into the lead. I thought he was going to go wide in that corner. He came in there hot. But the just... stroke Honda, Ryan Hughes. Here comes Carmichael. He wants him back again. What acceleration there. Let's Hughes rides with the same aggression that Ricky does. Wyndham already with about a two-second lead on Brown. The guys sneak in there like Portelli and Carmichael. Wyndham had a third in the first moto. Can he hang on and win the second moto? Look at Dowdy. Dowdy's coming back on Carmichael. I was standing there in the rain. It was a sloppy day that day. But boy, did he look great in his first pro debut. Led the moto for the last lap. Henry finally got around him. But Kevin likes this place. He's ridden well in this moto. But Carmichael has inched up. He really put the pressure on now. Two. After a fifth in the first moto, he won the second moto. Now he's trying to recover from a 13th place finish. Billman, who just dominated the first moto, has not been able to come close to these guys' pace. The chances are very good that we'll have the third different winner in three rounds. Two and 98, but that is so unusual. Look at this, Ricky Carmichael. They end up rubbing near the berm, and Carmichael takes the lead. Second moto, Wyndham. He's got to be just blown away right now, going, how is Ricky going that fast? But if he can keep the pressure on, force Ricky to keep riding. Uh-oh, the lap rider's out of shape. Uh, Chad Watts, Carmichael's mechanic. Davey? Well, Chad, right up to that last lap, this is not the... 70s, good. where he had only 10 races that year, and but eight victories. I had the same thing. It was 10 nationals in the 500 class a year. Ricky Carmichael with the checkered flag. Wins the battle, but it will be Philemon who wins the war. Welcome back to Southwick, Massachusetts, as we prepare for the first moto in the 250s. You know, some people are calling this the USGP because we've got so many GP riders over here. That includes this very great rider, four-time world champion Joel Smets, also three-time motocross to nations winner. His wrencher, I guess. <laughs> as we check the uh, Suzuki point standings, Tortelli. Still leads the points by six. Stroke, we'll see who gets the best jump. 30-second board sideways. We're off and running. First photo, 250s. Schmitz just leaped off that gate. And it's Joel. It's the whole shot. Two KTMs out in front. John Dowd looks like he's in second. And Doug Henry in third. Look out. For Southwick, or starts for Doug Henry. He can get him, but look at who he's got on his tail. Ricky Carmichael. Number 118 is Joel Smith. Henry has moved into second place. Carmichael into third. Look at the way these guys are swapping down that straightaway. Carmichael battling for second place right now. It's part of bar. They take two very different routes into that berm. Mechanics area. Good thing those guys backed up. He just went right up in there where they were standing and missed all the holes. Carmichael with an eighth in the first moto in the opening round, a fifth in the next one, and a thirteenth in the first round of Mount Morris is looking for his best first moto finish of the season. He's hounding Schmetz right now. Perfect to really bother Schmetz.
Carmichael to the outside. And in the process, these two are starting to pull away from third place. Here comes Ricky. A little touch. Hey, I'm here. Get out of my way. And Ricky Carmichael moves into first. Well, you can call that a little touch if you want, but I'm going to call it two touches for the lead. Now he can see firsthand. Henry must be back there going, gee. Now he's still hanging pretty close in third, but he's getting an eyeful. Look at this. Ricky gives him an elbow, gets into the berm. He looks like he's minding his own business, but Smith's acting like he's going to come back in there. Boy, Henry's not giving in. He loves this track anyway. Beautiful line he took to get back in there. He actually got pushed over the berm. Said, forget it. I'm not going around that outside. Again. Massachusetts in our first 250 motocross. Way out in front right now is Ricky Carmichael. But here is where the battle is for third. Henry Tortelli with Dowd and Hughes behind them. Just went through a little one-line section back there. Doug had made a mistake at the approach of the corner of him right now. But it doesn't bother Doug. He's He's just out here having a good time, trying to pick some good lines. Looked like he just kind of rode through that corner kind of nice and easy and let all those guys... Maybe it's going to be Doug. You always hear that when the USGP comes to America, that uh, the... Whoa! Ryan Hughes goes flying! And he's not moving. Ryan Hughes looked like he was doing a helicopter off the bike. That's Ryan's bike. He goes tumbling by. That's fourth gear wide open on that four stroke. You're going 60. This is a tough race. The checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. The monkey off the back. Riding a terrific race. Mike Garaco holding on to second with John Dowd, the local oh, favorite. 99 in that season's opener at Glen Helen. Tim Ferry's been hanging around there close. 30-second board is sideways. Let's see who gets the break in the gate. Wyndham, a pretty good run, but John Dowd. Dowdy gets the whole shot on the KTM. Really looked like a little bit of Supercross style back there. He landed at the downside of one of those whoops, made everything look smooth, but you got to get a good run up the hill to jump that ball. And it makes you nervous. You just you don't get any time to breathe, and here he comes. Here comes Carmichael looking over at John Dowd. They don't even stay bar to bar very long. Maybe a fraction of a second. Progress of Ferry back there. I know Ferry, when he caught him, thought he was faster. There he goes. Tim Ferry. Dowd takes plenty of looks at him and still holds on. Ferry, though, to the inside. Now he's starting to get it squared away. Uh-oh, that's Villeman. 934, David Villeman. Hard to get by those four strokes. Looks like a Honda down. Sebastian Tortelli, number 13. More bad luck for Sebastian. Yeah, that's just, it's, I can't believe that it's a guy that much talent, who works that hard, is willing to do whatever it takes. In the points lead, three years in a row, and he's losing it again. Man, and it's just amazing to watch. Well, this track is very much like water. It changes every lap, and the checkers are out for Ricky Carmichael. His Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland. We're getting set for our first 250 action of the afternoon. Absolute beautiful day in this area. A little bit hard after the way the Supercross season went, but look at him right there. Only one point out of second in Suzuki point standings. Looking for his fourth moto win in a row. Card is sideways. We're ready to go for Bud's Creek. You can see Tortelli get pinched right away. Out in front, though, is Kevin Windham on the Team Suzuki. With him the hole shooter, Carmichael right behind him. He's got Carmichael right there. Definitely one of Wyndham's favorite tracks, though. Here comes Carmichael. Boy, Carmichael gives him a little bump from behind. Check out Dowd. He's back there in third. He's on the KTM for a stroke. A bigger bobble there would have cost him some more time, Kevin. Doesn't even really break stride. He taps his foot down, keeps the balance, and keeps on motor. And he's still got the lead and a cushion. Battle for the lead is on here with the 250s. First moto, Butts Creek, Maryland. Kevin Windham, who from the very first turn has been out in the lead, has been challenged time and time again by Ricky Carmichael. Here comes Carmichael. Lots of speed. Windham gets a good line through there, though. Acceleration up the hill. The fans are going crazy here at Butts Creek. Ricky Carmichael wants to make his move. No, I, I think you have to look at it with a different strategy. I'm not sure what would be better for Kevin if he were to just get mad, really mad, and fight Ricky, 
or if he just tries to do it with finesse and have a lot of fun out there and go, hey, this is just a good time. It's just like practice. This is just another training ride. Let's just have a good time, get the most out of myself, not get tight. He ride tight with all the pressure. He's got to find what works best for him. Here comes Carmichael on the downhill. Can Kevin come back? Can he get mad? I think it's best left alone right now as we rejoin the action here at Bud's Creek, Maryland. Let me remind you that Ricky Carmichael is way out in front here in the opening moto. And the battles have ensued behind him. Look at that. Blank LaRocco working against Tim Ferry. These guys really picked up the pace. I think they helped each other elevate that pace to catch Ferry. I don't think they could have done it by right themselves. back again. Oh, great bar to bar battle. Ferry tries to cut to the inside. Tortelli just lost that reel. He was just trying to get that corner squared off, get by it. Worked good. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. The acceleration of Tortelli up the hill. Must have been a good setup. Ricky doesn't usually change his bike too much from track to track. No, I didn't either. Once I got something I liked, I left it alone. So I didn't want to go out there guessing at what the bike was going to feel like. I still, still had the desire. Could still go this fast, finish up there in the top three, four, win some stuff here and there. Look at Ricky. He's only right there. 21 years old, nine years younger than LaRocco, facing Carmichael down. And the LaRocco's always been physically fit. There's the checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. And for the second race in a row, he's won that opening moto, which earlier in the season. Carmichael, LaRocco, Tortelli, the top three. The second board has appeared. There's Tortelli. Don't figure him out of this one. And we're off and running. Tortelli, a better start this time. Kevin with the number 14, his second hole shot of the day. Oh, but looking at what's happened so far this season, I think I'd be a little bit more worried about number four back there than both Dowd and, and uh, Ryan Hughes. A little bit of cushion for a few laps to get comfortable. Then I don't care if Carmichael catches him. He'll have a little bit more firepower. Reynard, Ferry, Tortelli, Raynard. As they come over the hill, and well, there, there's RC, and Ricky goes down. Boy, he came off that hill sideways. Sideways like that. There he comes by. He seems to be okay, but I don't even think he landed on the bike. It seems like his, the right side of his bars may be bent down. He's probably starting to figure out now how to get around, but it's not easy. Here comes Tim Ferry on the inside. A pretty easy move for Tim, really. And uh, Tortelli's right there to take advantage of Dowd as well. Ferry now. Look at the power as he goes by Hughes for second place. Now he wheelied all the way up the hill. I don't even think he was able to use all the power. I know Ryan wasn't. Those bikes are pretty much even. And a little bit better line. He was able to apply a little bit more power. Look at Rhino. Wow. He's struggling a little bit today, Art. I think he's not quite right in that cartwheel he did last week. I'm not even sure if he still knows where he is. Oh. This off camera is so tricky. Look at all the different lines. <laughs> Art Ekman, David Bailey, David Coombs bringing you the action from Bud's Creek. Second moto, 250s. Kevin Windham has a good lead in first place. But Tim Ferry, he's got his pressure there in second place. Number 15. Oh, here comes Carmichael. Out of nowhere. Unbelievable. You know what? Now the overall is within his grasp. Carmichael will have to get at least a couple more positions for a chance at the overall. He gets right by Ryan Hughes easily there. Anywhere near this. Mike LaRocca, who took a second in the first moto, he still has a chance in there. Now LaRocca stayed so much lower to the ground off that jump. And Dowd stayed low to the ground, got back on it, and just moved right over in front of Dowd. There's a new situation in the mechanics area. Guys, while watching Sebastian Tortelli trying to go for this overall, check out his teammate Ezra Lusk. It looks like his bike is broken. He's continued to lead the Hondas as far as points and positioning this year. There's Ricky Carmichael making a move. Carmichael and Ferry going at it. <laughs> Ferry got him right back. That was an aggressive move, and here comes Carmichael again. Whoa. Boxing him out on the turn right there. Carmichael, relentless. I don't blame him. He's fighting for that position. He shouldn't just give it to him. But he's gonna have to. Looked like they scraped a little bit there. 
as he continues to lead the points. Here's Sebastian Tortelli. Tortelli fell twice in the second moto of the last race at Southwick with the seventh overall, but he's still only 14 points behind the leader, Ricky Carmichael. That's how far out in front he was. He was just having a good time this last lap. There's John Dowd, number 16. And Carmichael has not given up. Uh, this has been one of his favorite tracks as he goes up to the finish line very easily. Takes the checkered flag for his first moto win of the season. Kevin Wyndham, a great race. But the battle for fourth is on now. Carmichael can win the overall if he passes John Dowd. Carmichael to the inside. Dowd, he tries to come back, but no. He'll try this hard. The turnaround at Southwick winning two motos. He gets the checkered flag. He gets his second consecutive win on the season. Carmichael, for the fourth time in five starts at this track, his second consecutive win moving him. Well, Ricky Carmichael taking a 13-point lead over Kevin Wyndham. Tortelli still in the battle, but will be underway with our first 250 moto of the afternoon. And, of course, it's very important. Ricky Carmichael's on a roll. Can he keep it going? We're off and running at Red Bud. Look at the start by 16. On the KTM 520, John Dowd gets down the veteran out in front. Carmichael moving into second place. So Ricky's in good position as they come down the ski jump. Carmichael, immediate pressure. Dell comes up short, and Ricky goes into first place. Dowd, right, Ryan Hughes right there, 120. Those guys have more power. Dowd going wide on the off camber. Wyndham almost got that in. Dowd with Ryan Hughes and Tortelli in their first moto of 250 action from Redbud. Carmichael going through that sandy area. Ricky Carmichael finishing the first lap in front of Kevin Windham. And Tortelli is starting to blister the course. Morocco back to 10. Boy, that's unlike Mike Morocco this year. Whoa, hang on, Tortelli. Kevin Windham, a chance to go bar to bar now with Tortelli. This is a second chance for Kevin Windham right now. Tortelli seemed to be faster, got around, made the little mistake. Kevin is back in this fight. Tortelli with four podiums on the air takes the inside. Carmichael, he'll just check out and just run their pace and they won't be able to catch him. Tortelli doing a little bit more of a nosedive there than I think he meant to. Starting to stretch it out a little bit, but still no sight of Carmichael. That sweeper like that and Carmichael's that far ahead. Look at him, he's gone. And Tortelli is really putting time on Wyndham now, so maybe we're going to see a race for the top spot. Ryan's been able to hold him off. Hang on to your hats. There's Ricky Carmichael, but look who's right behind him, Sebastian Tortelli. And Tortelli might be the fastest bike on the track right now. Proof for Tortelli back there. They can see all that, that he's on his mind a little bit. And once he get on his mind, then you're in the driver's seat a little. Carmichael's arms looking just like pistons. Oh! He lost control for a moment. Here comes number 13. That's Tortelli. One foot on the peg for Carmichael, and Tortelli went by him. Some mistakes that he hasn't been making this year when he's had pressure like that. He's made mistakes all on his own. He hasn't needed anyone to do it, but this time, Tortelli forced him into that. And the crowd loves it. They love this competition. A little Justin on the clutch right there. Just to let Ricky know, well, yeah, I wasn't working all that good, but now I got it dialed in. <laughs> Pulling away. A little, a little bobble here. This track is difficult. It is, and the thing is about it is that the braking bumps, see all that dancing around they do before they get to the berm, it's hard to get set in the berm. So a couple of times, Tortelli's all, almost gone over it. Some good saves, though. He's still got a good cushion over Ricky. All three seasons, he's participated on the 250s here. He's led the points early in the year. He took it all the way to Unadilla a couple of years ago. Really taking it to Carmichael here. I'm pretty impressed that Carmichael's hanging on this close. As soon as Tortelli got around him, he pulled away quick. Carmichael closed it a little bit, so he's still got a shot at the win. Before you find Moto wins for this young Frenchman. He is really on right now. Everywhere, he's got great momentum. He's been able to jump that double where he got sideways earlier. Ricky has it. A couple other spots in the track where he's got more momentum, and Ricky is just flat out getting beat right now. He can afford it. He's got a good lead. 
Only about a half a lap to go. And, you know, he put out a lot of energy. He worked hard for this. But on a cooler day, the bikes run a little bit better. And so, yeah, Carmichael's close. He can't afford to be cruising. And he is cruising. That's something's weird. Something's going wrong. Carmichael just blasts right by him. Something's wrong with the bike. Yeah. Oh, just a few corners away from the checkered flag, Ricky Carmichael picks off the moto. Incredible. Telly has got it going again, but slowly. And it sputters again. He's going to try to push it across the finish line. I don't know if he can get up that big finish line jump. The crowd is trying to encourage him. Oh, this takes so much strength, David. Tortelli trying to get up that final hill. And his mechanic, Shane Drew, is not allowed to help him. I think Shane may be able to make some suggestions. What he's lapped up to, that's going to be his finish. Oh, and all that energy with another moto coming up. It's tough, this motocross game. Track and trail. 125's exciting racing, but that first moto for the 250s, number 13, Sebastian Tortelli, led until right near the finish line. We've got conflicting reports that it was fuel related. That's Carmichael, off and running. Great start by John Dowd. From the looks of things, it's a good thing they're out in front. Looking back in the corner. Tortelli's mixed up in that mess. Ron Cotta's hounding him. There's number 13. Tortelli finally getting going after that very disappointing first moto. Another bad break. Can you imagine what's going through his mind Whoa. now? There's LaRocco down. LaRocco down as well. Looked like he was holding his backside a little bit. When uh, Raynard also was... It's just an unfortunate... You know, these guys are working so hard. Wyndham and Tortelli to try to keep... Carmichael from getting a big points lead and you know that they have the speed a lot of times but not the luck. Here last year is having his best day on a 250. After a third in the first moto he wasn't on the pace. Finally gets around Rhino. Rhino made him earn it. So now Wyndham is right there with Carmichael so whatever us trading to ride against those bikes. Carmichael getting everything out of that 250 and at times still not enough. Carmichael taking the inside for second place against Dowdy. So it's Roncotta at first, Carmichael in second. So it's Roncotta, Carmichael, and Wyndham. Once again, Wyndham is matching the pace of Carmichael so far. He's following up through the pack. Welcome back to Red Bud Track and Trail. The final 250 moto. And Roncotta having problems. There's Ricky Carmichael in the battle for first. Makes it easy for Ricky. Roncotta's going to make it tough on Kevin. Wyndham, though, trying to make the move right now. Goes to the inside. Kevin Wyndham comes out with second place. Roncada back to third. Well, one of them is that he just made trade places with Carmichael. And that bike of Carmichael's has been pretty good over the years. Look at the wins he's racked up all on a Kawasaki. Now Ezra Lusk's going to be on that bike if, if things go the way they sound. Kevin Wyndham didn't stop at second place right now. He's starting to pick up the pace and put the heat on Ricky Carmichael. Oh, this is a great ride for Kevin Wyndham. Yeah, he's got a good outside line. Whips around that outside burn, trying to catch up with Ricky, and Wyndham does so. That has been working for him. Every time it was an easy move. Slipping and sliding, Wyndham stays in the middle of the track. Now in that off camber, boy, that's difficult. Well, let's take a look. Feeling Carmichael's just going, all right, if I keep the pressure on Kevin, he'll fade. I don't think so. Kevin is a lot stronger this year. I talked to him a little bit at Mount Morris, and he put in a pretty strong showing there. He's strong. I've done the Ironman three times. That guy's got bigger arms than I do, so I don't think he's going to get tired here. If Kevin can hold Ricky off. Diving that inside down there. You saw the 125 class, the guys that went wide. Anytime there was somebody behind him, they would lose the position right there. So Kevin is doing a good job to take the best line without slowing himself down. David, the wind is really picking up. Is this going to affect the riders? It only affects them, I think, right there. They're going right into a headwind. You see that banner getting pushed. Where it really affects them is it's coming from their right as they go off that big ski jump as they're, they're approaching it now. Right now, we pick up the action as Ricky Carmichael trying to catch up with Kevin Windham. Wyndham's done well staying out in front of the points leader so far. 
Yeah, you know, I trust that Kevin is slowly on his way to, you know, to winning. Uh, he won the last uh, the last heat in uh, in Butts Creek, and um, he has the speed to win. He just has to believe in himself and uh, keep walking. And I think he's gonna it's gonna happen. Having finished second in the first moto, this one's for the overall win. Yeah, if he can stay here, then we would be nice. Off after this, you can just kind of savor that feeling for a couple of weeks before they head into Unadilla, New York. What's that week off in the middle of a season like this worth to you? Well, if he loses this, it's torture. But if he can win it, man, it's a great feeling. They all... National Motocross AMA victories. Well, there's a line right there, Art, that Kevin better watch out for the next lap. Ricky coming across the inside. That's how he took the lead from his teammate, Roncada. And he's following Kevin to the outside there. Obviously better. Look, he's going to go for the double. Makes it no problem. So check that out. Learning something from Wyndham. An empty starting gate. It says how Ricky sees his competition. He doesn't see anybody as competition, but he's got some now. I'm not used to seeing him following the same line quite as much either. Here comes Ricky, though. Look out. He gets the inside edge on Kevin Wyndham. They don't even rub. Ricky Carmichael, our new leader. That looked like a gift to me. Kevin looked over and saw him. Of course, Ricky came in there hot. Lead here. And that's a risky uh, strategy. I don't know that I'd want to have to have the chore of passing Ricky back before the end of this race, but obviously Kevin feels comfortable. Second place, and let's check in once again with Davey Coombs. He's down there where all the action is, Davey. Well, once again, Chad, you guys are back out front. Wyndham wants to take it away from him right now. We'll be right back to Red Bud Track and Trail in a moment. Here at Red Bud Track and Trail, Ricky Carmichael got the win of the first moto handed to him when Sebastian Tortelli's bike just failed right before the finish line. So that checkered flag is passed. I think he can coast it in from here. He can see it waving. Carmichael takes two. Oh, there could be the reason. Vivo Forte, our spotter extraordinaire, said there might be something wrong with the chain in back, David. Yeah, there's no chain on the sprocket. The third last lap happening in four motos today at Red Bud. Both last lap casualties placed 13th. Land Hughes, though, takes second place. Stefan Rancata, his first 250 podium. Ezra Lusk, his best of the season in fourth. Davey was referring to the motocross donations. Ryan Hughes, Ricky Carmichael, Travis Pastrana to represent the United States. It might have been a letdown after Ricky Carmichael won his very first 250 Supercross title. But here at the midway point of the outdoor series, I'd like to think it's the other riders dramatically upping the level of competition. What are you going to do if you're in 20th place? Ricky Carmichael getting set. The board is sideways. We're almost set to go for our first photo of 250 action from Unadilla. The charge is on for the first turn. Right there. Ryan Hughes, number 120. Wyndham is on the inside on the Suzuki. Wyndham takes the lead. Ricky Carmichael in third. Tim Ferry in fourth. Hughes as they come down that huge hill. That's Tim Ferry just coming into the picture in fourth. Rhino securing second on the turn. That bike has got a lot of power, and he's going to pick up some rocks. Uh oh Tortelli went down right before the tree. He's got a lot to make up. Down in the first lap, having to come from last again. He's had more bad luck this year. Ricky Carmichael into second place on Ryan Hughes. So Ricky in good position now to attack Kevin Windham. Getting the most out of that 250. The battle is on with Hughes trying to come back on Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael shuts the door up top. Still three riders looking for the lead. Ricky goes wide on the off camber. Oh, the first stroke to Brian Hughes off the track. More bad luck for Ezra Lusk, who, after battling a rib and ankle injury, has posted four consecutive double-digit finishes. All 15 laps for the overall victory. Oh, Wyndham is down. Ricky Carmichael is our new leader. Boy, talk about a break. To these guys, he was not out front having to block anybody. He was driving fast enough to win this race. Oh, and Ferry's starting to put the pressure on Carmichael. His consistency and improvement on that YZ426F this year has really earned him a new contract with Yamaha. And, of course, it was Tim's first 
250 national motocross victory. As for this year. There's Tortelli up and running once again. Before the end of this race, with the pace he has, if he was anywhere near this battle, he'd be able to beat these guys. Whoa, Fury to the inside. He's really showing Carmichael something right now. In time. Barry going wide on the off camber, loses some time, but look at the power that four-stroke has on the uphill swing. Ferry is the new leader. Oh, my goodness. You see Carmichael right there ducking. He's getting showered by the roost off Ferry's bike. Ferry now, the maturity in his riding style on this four-stroke. It's taken a while to get used to, but he has it under control now. Behind our leader, Tim Ferry, we've got a great battle for second. Morocco cuts to the inside on Ricky Carmichael. Oh, what a bang-bang move. Carmichael tries the inside move. Has good possession, but on the downside, slips just a little bit. Back and forth we go. He gets better acceleration up the hill. Bar to bar, Ricky Carmichael and Morocco battling for that second place. Larocco with a good, quick break. The white flag is out. This is the final lap. Despite the fact that Carmichael and Larocco have gone back and forth for second place, not far in back of them, ready to take advantage of a miscue, is Kevin Windham. Windham has stepped it up to winning his first 250 moto. It looked like Larocco caught up, may have caught... Ricky sleeping a little bit, thought, well, I'm not going to catch Carmichael, who was passed right here a lap ago. Ricky Carmichael hoping to put himself in position, at least in second place in this ball. Whoa, look out. He bounced pretty big as he took his hand off the bars. He controls it. His first moto win of the year. Carmichael, look at his battle for third. Who got it? Larocco or Wyndham? Oh, my goodness, what a great first 250 moto with Tim Ferry. He's at the line, ready for the second moto. And Ricky Carmichael, well, history's in front of him, but he might be in those books as the all-time AMA U.S. National Motocross win leader. The 13, alongside Carmichael to his right, and they're off and running. Not a bad start for Carmichael. And Carmichael is right there. Number 120. On the fourth stroke, Ryan Hughes, his second straight hole shot, but Carmichael quickly moves into second place. Kevin Windham once again, another good start for Kevin in third. This rocky track looked like they might have rubbed just a little bit. Where the bar, down the gravity cavity, and up we go. Ricky Carmichael looking to cut underneath Ryan Hughes. Does he have the acceleration? At that short distance, yes. The right one's gone now. He started with both of them. A great freight train. It looks competitive. Here comes Hughes. He wants another piece. Problem or not, he's out in front. And the battles for a second is Wyndham. Gets in front of Hughes. Kevin Wyndham, number 14. This is probably the worst track in the world to have a stomach problem. Every corner is just filled with choppy holes through right now. And as long as Kevin is riding this well, and Portelli's that close to the front, Ricky will have a tough one. Whoa, Larocco! Ran into the back of someone. Yes, that's John Dow. Tough spot for Dow to try to get going again. I think he stalled the motor, too. We've got a challenge for the lead. Kevin Windham is knocking on the door of Ricky Carmichael. Lap time-wise, then Ferry, who just rode through everybody out front. Look at that way. He just gets down that hill. Wasn't able to hold the bottom, but... Whoa, the two-stroke versus four-stroke for Honda. 250s. He's got the lead. There he is. Kevin Windham's behind him. Well, Wyndham can upset it. Barry can upset it. Tortelli can upset it. Hughes is there in case any of these guys throttle right there. He's not even on the ground yet. He's already wide open. So as soon as that wheel touches, it just shoots him forward. He picks up another eighth of a second over these guys. Tortelli's picking up on Wyndham now for second place. Since after that first moto getting second, that he's real frustrated going, man, I'm, I'm not going fast enough. But I think the... What's happening is everybody else has gone up to his speed, and now he's going to have to ride smart from here to the end and still grab this championship. Well, this John Sebastian Waugh is back in the 250 American ranks, the Canadian National Series, taking a break. Right together, can Tortelli hold it around the corner? Great speed by Tortelli. In the best gear, Tortelli trying to make some adjustments there midair. Tortelli's over the front of the bike, but he's also crouched a little bit. He's in a much more... Missed those holes. 
like Hughes just did right there. He made a straightaway out of that big sweeper. Ricky Carmichael looking to become the winningest AMA motocross rider in the sports history, number four, here at Unadilla. He took second in the first moto. He's out in front here in the second moto. Guys, check it out. Tim Berry just pulled in. You can see the whole caliper of his front brake fall off. We're getting ready to talk to his mechanic. That's when you just want to reach for a pair of wire cutters to snip that all away and get him going again. What a great break for Ricky Carmichael, who's got Tortelli on his uh, backside. But it was very, he had the beat, really, for this overall. What a ride from last place. Remember, he went down and came all the way to fifth. He's faster than Ricky. Ricky knows it. But he doesn't want to give it to him yet. Here's Tortelli making the pass on Carmichael. And Ricky knows that this doesn't mean the overall. And he can keep that string alive, but being the competitive Ricky Carmichael we're used to, here he comes back again. Ricky Carmichael takes the lead back. I'm still at a loss for words at the way he flew out of the gravity cavity. He flew out of there completely sideways. Let's set it up for the pass, though. And Tortelli isn't giving up. These guys... They both want to win this moto like it's the last moto of the year, and everything depends on it. Tortelli might not be in line for the championship, but by golly, he wants to win this moto. Yeah, it looks like somebody forgot to tell Ricky that this doesn't really matter for the overall. Look at the way he's charging. Through all the holes, soaking up that roost. Well, Ricky doesn't want to win an overall with a 2-2. Tries a little bit, and it worked perfect for the pass, but now Sebastian's ahead of him again. Ricky Carmichael, in his pro career, has never won an overall without winning a moto. Here comes Carmichael once again. Oh, oh the fans are loving this one. That just looked like he just took a huge risk to me. Just wide open through all those braking bumps, standing up right across the front, the line that Tortelli had. Being careful not to rub, Tortelli regains the lead. Kelly came up, he's going faster, and Ricky said, okay, well, I want to win this moto bad enough that I'm willing to take a few chances and hit a few holes that I was missing before. Close to going down and just muscle his way through it. Tortelli already with about a two-second lead. The inside, it's super rough. That's where guys are letting off. He powers through that. That straightaway for another pass. But Tortelli now has a substantial lead on Ricky Carmichael. Play. Carmichael down. Will he lose a position? He lost some more plastic. David McPhillaman has moved up to fifth, as we see in our summary, as Kevin Windham back and forth we go with Ryan Hughes. It's Windham now taking over third. Photo. LaRocco with 95 with 2-2. And 96, Greg Albertine, one Dilla with a second place in both motos. And of course, Emmy broke that trend. Well-earned victory for Sebastian Tortelli taking the checkered flag. And Carmichael, with a second place, wins the overall title. Wins in AMA U.S. National Motocross history. Tortelli, Carmichael, and Wyndham. Ricky Carmichael has now won four in a row. He becomes only the second rider in history of AMA Dude, U.S. National the Motocross. The sun's just beating on him. Look at that. They're trying to keep these guys cool by waving the pit board. They got the umbrellas over these guys. 250 moto from Troy, Ohio. A great strike for Wyndham. He gets the whole shot. Kevin's been getting some very, very good starts. Ricky Carmichael already in second place. Full technique, a good super cross rider. He might be tough to pass on this track. Technique. He says it's a good track for him. I like to think that Kevin's got a good chance here as well with all the technique. Plus, being from the south, he knows how to ride in the heat and humidity. The wheel just explodes off the top of the jump. Now he's already psychologically beaten a little bit. Really got to fight to get back around Ricky. Not very many people have been successful with that. Hughes on the Honda, and Ferry goes off the track. Keeps it running, though. Action, Ricky Carmichael leads. Kevin Windham, number 14, on the Suzuki on the inside there, is in second place with Tortelli in third. Tortelli now looks like he wants second place. He's out. He might be able to still get in the top 20. He's late in the race. Now he's stopping now, so maybe that's, that's a bad sign. Nowhere near the mechanics area. His ninth moto. 
Just around the corner. Taking it easy. The checkered flag is flying. So it's Ricky Carmichael, Kevin Windham, and Sebastian Tortelli in our first 250. Ryan Hughes right next to him, number 120. Sebastian Tortelli, number 13. We're off and running. Second moto. Ron Cotta gets caught behind. Tim Ferry. Great start for Ferry. Carmichael got stuck on the inside. See him way over there to the left. Came out pretty good behind LaRocco. John. Out in front, John down, followed by Tim Ferry. After that tough time in the first moto for Ferry, he's out near the front. Yellow flags are out, and they're still coming over the triple. Tortelli's down. Looks like Wyndham just getting going. This guy has the worst luck. So you have the second and third finishers in the opening moto having to fight from behind and fight through the traffic. Ferry versus Dowd out front. Hughes is right behind him. Three, four strokes. Second. Ryan Hughes now starting to make a move on John Dowd. Here comes Hughes. Rhino doing the job. Hottest time of the day on purpose. Ricky Carmichael also with that humidity in Florida. Gets plenty of hot damp. Carmichael moving toward the inside with Dowd up in front. And Carmichael a great move on Ezra Lusk. So much faster than this. And trust me, when these guys have a pro, uh, looks like Carmichael takes advantage of John Dowd right there. He gets Here's David Villeman now. Another battle between Frenchmen. Sebastian Tortelli, number 13, Team Honda. Oh, Tortelli doing a great job. I'm starting to think he might be the luckiest as well for the third week in a row. Carmichael's been the benefactor of some really bad luck from his opponents. The two main threats to him. Kevin Windham and Sebastian Tortelli crashed on the first lap. Doesn't he have? Oh, oh. Sebastian Tortelli. Well, this doesn't look good. He's out of it. Well, a referee would call the fight right now. Oh, he doesn't even know what's going on. Oh, I hate this for him, you know? These guys have so much bad luck. They try so hard. This isn't a guy that crashes because he doesn't know what he's doing. This is a guy that works as hard as anybody. He's got everything he needs. And a great record behind him. I hate to see it. Just, I can't stand seeing that happen to guys like this. And Sebastian Tortelli recovering on the sideline with the medics. That's and his wife just leaning in there. Jeff Stanton also leading in. After that scene at Redbud where he's trying to push the bike up over the finish line and it's some bad luck. And now the rest of it he's places. Up. Now he's got it going on outdoors. The checkers for Ferry. Carmichael in second place. Won six consecutive events in two consecutive years. Ferry, Rocco's best overall finish on the season. A second place behind Ricky Carmichael, Kevin Windham. He is not in the starting lineup as we get set for the first 250 moto from Washougal, Washington. Off and running. And it's down with position as well. All the leaders are right there. Ricky said he wanted to keep an eye on Kevin Windham today. Windham's right behind him. And then the race fell apart for him. Here comes Ricky Carmichael. The crowd is going crazy. It's a fast train. All the big guns up front. Look at Wyndham on the outside. Wyndham just blitzes by John Dowd. That he is not pointed out in 125 Supercross. Here comes Carmichael with the challenge. Ah, oh, that whoop section is so great for passing and exciting for the fans. Lusk, Carmichael inside on Ezra Lusk, but couldn't quite make it that time. Look at the speed up that hill. Stay out of that roof. Also to keep Ezra guessing. Actually a three-way battle now for first place. Wyndham's right behind as Ricky goes bar to bar downhill. Can't quite make it stick. This time he does. Wyndham, a nice move on Ezra Lusk. On the slippery surface. Tim Ferry. Doesn't take it easily, that's for sure, as Lusk has given him a great battle. Portland, Oregon. In a beautiful sight and some great racing. Sebastian Tortelli currently in fifth this year. Look at this. It's tightened up for the lead. The fans, you can hear them roaring. Carmichael and Wyndham. Can he hold off Kevin Wyndham? 
Little mistake right there. Look at him just holding that inside. He knows Kevin. Stay close right here. Here it comes. Kevin with him on the inside. Beats him in the whoops. Can he make it to the corner? Has given away to other riders in first motos before this season, but I don't think he's been passed like this before. Now Kevin's just riding better. He was all over him. Look at the gap he's already opened up. Right now, if he can just stay with Wyndham, he'll only lose three points. If Ferry's able to get around, Ricky just pins it everywhere, and you can't do that on this racetrack. You saw Ferry come out of that corner there couple of corners ago and get sideways that's because he tried to get on it a little bit hard look how far forward Kevin was through that sweeper almost going over the handlebars right there charging hard because although he was able to get around Rick he hasn't been able to drop him Wyndham's won one other moto that was the second moto at Bud's Creek this year anywhere any day might even be a little bit more versatile than Ricky a little bit better on hard pack slick a little bit better in the mud Barry continues in third. Ricky to get a little bit closer, and if he blows the last corner before the whoops, Ricky can get him there. I love the way they have the whoop section placed here. Look at Ricky, though. He's very close. Kevin Wyndham makes a little mistake. Wyndham. The whoops and the checkers. Nice ride for Kevin Wyndham. Ricky Carmichael second. After Ferry, Ezra Lusk nailing down a fourth. Good ride for him. And underway with our second 250 moto from Oshugal. Morocco once again getting trapped behind. Ferry, Carmichael, Wyndham, one, two, three. His third American AMA 250 win at Mount Morris this season. Won every race and Ricky finished second. Ricky would still win by 24 points, almost a complete moto. He's got a comfortable cushion, but then again, and it's dangerous for Ricky right now. Look at that. Whoa, Wyndham. A nice move in the corner on Villamy to uh, take place here in the 250s in the final moto of the day. Tim Ferry, our leader. There's Ricky Carmichael now, starting to step it up even closer. Feel it, the crowd's in it. This is what Ricky does to people. It was getting done to him in the beginning of the race. I thought Ferry was for real. He said he thinks he could have won that first moto. He's got RC breathing down his neck. Oh, what a move by Ricky Carmichael right before the whoop section. That's so aggressive. The ability to put yourself in that position to be able to just get to the end. We'll have his sixth straight overall victory. Here's Wendell making the move on Ferry. He wants to get up there and put the heat on Ricky Carmichael. Just like coming off the gate. You don't come off the gate and hang off the back. You get over the front end. That's the most aggressive position, and Kevin's in that position a lot. If Wyndham hopes to win the overall, he's got to take Carmichael one more Shugo time. Washington. The battle for the lead in our final 250 moto is on. Wyndham was the victor in the first moto. Ricky Carmichael, the defending champion. Wyndham now starting to show a wheel. Oh, Ricky had a good chance there to push out now. Wyndham is all over the place looking for a line to pass. Kevin Wyndham, on the other hand, he's had a lot of hard work that's put him on the edge of winning this season. Not there to Kevin Wyndham. Let's see what happens in the whoops. Boy, what a hippity hop for Wyndham to get into the whoops. His eye of confidence as we saw him in the post-moto interview after he won the first moto. He's been needing some of this. Get up in the fight, stay in the fight, get comfortable with that pace out front. Okay, that's what he's doing. Well, that's just so much more confidence he's felt on the season. It's not a conditioning thing. Kevin doesn't get tired. He gets nervous and tight. Look at this. Bar to bar we go. Whoa. The fans have every right to go crazy on this. Here comes Carmichael to the inside. Oh, he slipped out of the tail end. This will be if he can stay upright in the whoops. Look out. Here comes the champ. The checkers for Wyndham. What a great feeling this has got to be for Kevin Wyndham, who struggled through a Supercross season. Consistent motocross season, but his first victory of the year. Ricky Carmichael has some words for Tulicki there. Racking up the X's. Boy, is he ever. He took a second in Washougal with a 2-2 to break a string of five consecutive overall victories. Tortelli to his right. Who will get the jump? They're underway.
John Dowd of the KTM gets the whole shot. Carmichael's right there, so does Berry, Raynard, Billiman, Wyndham, Dowd. Well, John Dowd took the 250 race here. He's in a battle with Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael, beautiful timing. Dowd having Saved trouble. Nice. That takes a lot of strength to get yourself out of that. Carmichael looking so fast. And relaxed. Whips the back end out there, changed the direction in the air. Moto of each race. I find it a lot more bizarre that he just lapped Ezra Lust, the guy that used to just let young Ricky come ride on his track, shaking his head right there. Yeah, you better believe it. This is his track. He loves it. After Washigal, he had something to prove. We're holding on to a top five spot. Ron Conda moving up to seventh, down slipping to eight. Waiting for that gate to drop. The final moto of the afternoon underway. Carmichael a good start. Once again on that big 520 KTM, getting the whole shot. Wyndham's right there. It's going to be good because it's close. Coming dangerously close. Ricky Carmichael wants that second place right back at Austin Fourth as Ricky Carmichael wants to take a piece of John Dowd. Moves into the lead on the inside. Style, his attitude, and of course, the skill that he professes on these tracks. Veteran former national Japanese champion Kyle Lewis. The Ricky Carmichael looking for his second. Mary, Kevin Wyndham, your top three. And the significant factor. Two weekends of non-racing action as Carmichael takes the overall. Straight outdoor national title. Three in the 125 class, two in the 250 class. Wyndham, number 14. The only person with a mathematical chance, but I think right now. And we're ready to go. Photo number one of the 250s underway. Carmichael, a great start on the inside. The last race to the outside, but he slips and slides. And Carmichael takes the early lead. Look out. He's in good position now with Tortelli right behind him. Kevin with him, number 14. Carmichael in front of Tortelli. Oh, Carmichael, this little wash out there coming down the hill hot. Laying it into the corner. Look at these guys. They jumped that whole plateau. Tortelli's been on the podium five times this year, but he's had a few races that have just taken him right out of contention. Yeah. He's probably mad right now that Tortelli is still this close. Ricky likes to come from way behind or else get out front, and even in the first couple of laps, just disappear. Anytime somebody can hang with you for a little while like this, gives them a little bit of hope. <laughs> the only one. Number 13, Tortelli starting the season with a second at Glen Helen. Got his win in the second round, then the third at Mount Morris. He was... In the points lead by six points. He's been in the points lead of this series every year for the last three years at some time during the series. Puts him in a, a position to be even a little bit more desperate, try even harder, and that's when those kind of mistakes show up. When you're riding a little bit beyond your capability. The AMA Chevy Trucks Motocross Championships, and it's Ricky Carmichael trying to win the title before that final race, as he's done several times. He's going to have some bad luck. It usually goes the other way. Checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. Winning the first moto here at Binghamton. 13. Tortelli holding on to second place. And it was Tim Ferry and Stefan Roncata rounding out the top five. Not a race that consecutive years RC will have won at least seven national events during that time. If he stays in front of Wyndham. We're off and running. Moto 2, the 250. Another good break for Carmichael to the inside. There's Dowd to the outside, and Wyndham sneaks in there. Over the lead, Dowd fishtailing right in front of Ricky Carmichael. Whoa! And Barry is it? Really thought that once LaRocco got on that four-stroke, this is his fourth moto start on line, and all that roost coming off of Wyndham's bike. He's been about that distance from Wyndham. He hasn't been able to get any closer. Carmichael ready to challenge Wyndham here in the second moto of the 250s. See Wyndham wheeling over all the bumps. Ricky's like, the heck with it, I'll hit them all. Oh, look at that. Wyndham can feel it. Barry moving up into third, but all the eyes are on this battle out front. Here comes Carmichael with a long leap. And to the inside. Back and forth we go. Trying to close the gap that Dowd opened. Did you really see it coming over that hill? Oh, look out! Portelli goes flying. Oh, that was not good. He, he face planted hard. It's not quite as bad as what happened to him in Troy, but he looks pretty stunned. Man, he just hate, I didn't really see what he did to deserve that kind of a crash. 
really not that many bumps there. What is he yeah. riding for here? You know, the title's gone for Shane Drew. Tortelli's mechanic thing. Back and slides out and kicks all the way the other way. He didn't even have a chance and he hit his head so hard. Lucky that they've got so much. He passes there. Jeremy McGrath with his 16th 250 motocross victory. And at the same time, caps his second 250 outdoor championship. Kevin Wyndham taking second, Ferry third, Villeman holding on to fourth, and John Dowd. Yeah, Ricky, congratulations on defense of your title. We're proud to have you as a champion, and Wright will get the donations back again. Thanks a lot. Dave. Feels great to be able to hold that number one plate up. You got all the photographers, friends, people you've known over the years. and it <laughs> Ricky, you guys have become the first team since Jeff Emick, 1997, to win both the outdoor title and the Supercross title. I'll tell you, Davey, it was, uh, they had me scared there for a while. Things weren't going too good, and uh, after Washugo, I had the chance to go to uh, California and, and test some, some better motor stuff, and uh, I tell you, with the performance of the last two weeks, uh, I think this thing's running really good, and I'm back to my old self. And 20 seconds, and everyone thought I was washed up, and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to go out with a bang, and uh, I don't know, maybe next weekend I'll uh, try to beat Bomber's record. Much different with the top three for the overall here after the two motos of action, Carmichael, Wyndham, and Ferry with Dowd, and here's the Suzuki point standings with one more round left on the schedule. Carmichael, Wyndham, Ferry. Most likely Kevin Wyndham is going to be a little bit of an empty victory. Except a victory is a victory. The record books is the 32nd board is sideways. We're ready to go for the first photo from Delma, Pennsylvania for the 250s. Great start. He's going to the outside. John Sebastian won number 41 on the Honda. Winder has moved into fourth in the KTM and Wyndham makes the pass on Waz. Waz got caught up and cased it just. Waz went from first to third with that one mistake. And already Kevin Wyndham is pulling quite a lead on John Dowd, number 16. Get this record and yeah, it could be viewed perhaps as a little bit condescending, like you can just go in there and that's a gimme. And it's not going to be as easy as... It's it. approaching the checkered flag on the final lap. There it is. Cruises across the finish line. Turns back to see... With the Morocco Ferry. Ron Pavel and Villeman are top five. The candy. We're off and running. The final moto of 2001. John Dow, number 16, and Kevin Wyndham with another great start without a victory, but a lot of second places, and then he lost his factory job. That was the whole 125. You know, maybe those guys have an advantage because of the bike, but Kevin's got that great throttle control and the hard pack. You've got great throttle control everywhere, but remember every time we get to a hard, slick track like Dallas, New Orleans a couple of times when it was hard pack. Development is concerned. Here comes Kevin Wyndham. Sportsmanship by these guys. Kevin Wyndham, Tim Ferry, Mike LaRocco, Villeman, and John Dow. Well, Kevin, great way to end the season. You led virtually every lap, maybe even every inch of both modes here at Steel City. Yeah, it felt great. You know, uh, I'd like to thank all my sponsors for getting me through a, a mediocre season. Hopefully we can come back and uh, make it stronger next year. But Kevin, congratulations on winning the last race of the season. Thanks a lot. Checking out the overall situation now. Of course, Kevin Wyndham, the winner. Barry Morocco rounding out the post.